Hello and welcome to Diecast Restos for a custom on this short-lived MB201 Vectra or Cavalier GSI 2000. These 1990-91 models were regularly found missing this back panel. Perhaps this is why it was so fleeting, only receiving one colour change to green in Germany in 1991. This one had been turned upside down and scratched by the looks of things. However, the metallic maroon looked far better when new, like this example. This is a real Vauxhall Cavalier GSI 2000, but this is the car I'll be recreating, John Cleland's 1992 Cavalier from this famous incident, the BTCC title decider in the finale at Silverstone. Sober goes through to fourth position inside the Vauxhall, and Harvey's right behind, Harvey's attacking Cleland, there's Harvey, there's Cleland. So Cleland has stayed ahead, but Soper is ahead of the Vauxhall. So John Cleland is sandwiched between the two BMWs. I'm going for first, says John Cleland. But he's got to pass a lot of people, including the battered BMW of Steve Soper. They go round Abbey. And Harvey's coming up. Tim Harvey in the second BMW is inside Cleland at Bridge. He's gone through. He's up to fifth position. He's up to fourth position because Steve Soper's let him through. Tim Harvey is leading the championship again. Fantastic. But John Cleland is attacking Soper. He's up on two wheels. Soper holds his line. He's pushed right out to the right. He attacks again as they go to the right hand at Lovefield. And they both spin. They're both out. Soper and Cleland both out of the race. Two very determined chargers, each refusing to yield, and they've both paid the penalty. It's one of my favourite ever motorsport moments. I talked about it before when I recreated Cleland's 1989 Vauxhall Astra. At the start of that clip, Steve Soper in the damaged BMW had just passed Cleland, who was in fourth. If Cleland had finished fourth, he would have won the championship. Out of contention for the title, Soper backed Cleland up into his teammate Tim Harvey in the other BMW. Harvey was in the championship race. By doing so, Harvey managed to squeeze past Cleland before Soper allowed him to breeze by, putting Harvey in a championship winning position. And then you saw Cleland's retaliation. As Soper and Cleland went into Brooklyn's corner, Cleland's dive up the inside saw him launch his Cavalier up onto two wheels and make contact. While leaning on Soper, Cleland had a half a car length advantage going into the next corner, Luffield. Soper pulled a similar move on Cleland that put them both out of the race and the title firmly in the grasp of Tim Harvey. It was one of the most controversial races in British touring car history, and I wanted to pay tribute to it using this Cavalier casting. However, it needed some work before it was in a reasonable enough state to customise, including the removal of a bulge that had bubbled up on the roof. This was easily resolved with some filing and sanding with my rubbing block. Now here's some 3D printed reproduction inserts for the rear panel. These are by Walton Style and I'll leave a link in the description. Equally, the wheels that I used and the decals I apply later on are also from Walton style. This piece is an excellent fit, but you can see this was a perennial problem on three other castings I have here. I have this one in excellent condition, so you can see how it should appear with that fine GSI lettering. For the purposes of this video, as I'm basing the model on the BTCC Cavalier, I'll refer to it as that instead of the Opel Vectra. The Cavalier name had been associated with Vauxhall, the British arm of Opel under General Motors, since 1975. The Mark I was based on the Opel Ascona B and the Coupe based on the Manta B. It was a large family car, available as a saloon or hatchback, as well as the previously mentioned Coupe. These all carried a front-engined, rear-wheel drive layout. It was replaced by the front-wheel drive Mark II in 1981, equal to the Opel Ascona C. They were also loosely related to the Chevrolet Cavalier, the Cadillac Cimarron, 
Holden Kamira and Isuzu Asuka. These were available as a two or four door saloon, a five door hatchback or estate and also as a convertible. In 1988, the generation of Cavalier this casting is based on launched. The name changed to Opel Vectra in Europe, but retained the Cavalier name in the UK. It was sold as a four door saloon or five door hatchback. My granddad drove a gold hatchback Cavalier and I remember journeys in that were very comfortable and the interior was a nice place to sit. Also related to the hatchback version was the Vauxhall or Opel Calibra Coupe. Saab's 900, 95 and 93 were also related to the Cavalier underpinnings. Introduced to the engine lineup was the 2 litre 16 valve red top XE unit that was fitted to the GSI 2000. The GSI was also available with four wheel drive. The Cavalier was popular in the UK market, outselling Ford Sierra and leading its class between 1990 and 1994. It was the second best selling car in the country in 1992 behind Ford's Escort. After a minor facelift for 1993, the Cavalier was phased out in 1995 as the Vectra nameplate was unified between Opel and Vauxhall on the new generation Vectra B. But anyway, I wanted to take an opportunity to talk about my processes today rather than talk for the duration about the casting, real car or anything else related. The interior piece I will simply paint black to retain focus on the exterior. I know a lot of customizers go to insane lengths to detail the interiors. I don't mind doing a little, but I feel on enclosed 1 in 64 castings, the effort can be a bit wasted on the final product. Seeing as this is a race car, the interior was basic, with the interior stripped back for weight saving. On the body of the casting, I've roughly drawn in the black seal surrounding the windows, the grill and the badge. Now I'm brushing along a few of the significant cast lines to add some depth underneath the decals later on. A chrome base is added to the headlights and tail lights, though I have light decals to apply shortly. Next, on my completed wheels, I glue the 3D printed tyres onto each. Like before on John Cleland's Astra, I'm really pleased with how these look. They are an accurate match to the real car and are intricately detailed. Wheels can certainly make or break a custom. In my world, where realism is king, I have to put a great deal of effort into sourcing replicas or wheels that are as close a match to the real thing as possible. These definitely fit the bill for me. After this, I kind of needlessly detail the base for my own sense of self-satisfaction. That said, the tailpipe and back box are visible from the rear, so they need attention anyway. But for the next two minutes, I'm applying the decals, so jump ahead to 10 minutes 30 to skip this part if you aren't interested. Of course, this process took far longer than two minutes in real time. This footage is sped up by two or four times in some places. They were quite awkward to position at times, due to their tiny size and the curves of the body, particularly the lower quarters. But so far I've applied the headlights, Yokohama and Vauxhall badging, small mobile logo and now the bonnet decals, which you can kind of see in set. This side decal is huge and has the wording that goes across the front arch attached. At least with this casting, I don't have opening features like the Astra from before. But as it begins to settle in place, how good does that look? The finish on these decals is superb. Now for the large rear Mobile One logo. A cluster of three logos sit on the corner of the bumper, again another fiddly selection. Right, onto the rear now as I apply the tail lights. Under the boot lip is another Philips car stereo decal that slides into place and another mobile logo sits atop my reproduction plastic body panel. Then on the rear bumper, the words Vauxhall Cavalier appear with another Yokohama logo. 
Obviously, I repeat the left decals on the right, but I won't bore you with that level of repetition. Instead, a giant voxel griffin emblem lands on the roof. Accompanying this is some more voxel wording. Welcome back if you are rejoining us. My, how the look of this casting has changed for you guys from just two minutes ago. With all those freshly applied decals now in situ, I need to protect them. First, I use Mr. Mark Softer Solution to set them all in place and soften them up a bit. Then, after that, I clearly need a coat of clear to lock it all in. A dose of Tamiya TS13 should do. And now it is time to reassemble. Fitted first is the polished window plastic with the rear view mirror drawn in. Then after that comes the plain black interior piece. Lastly, the base holds it all in. As it's finished with a screw or two. Here's how my Vectra Stroke Cavalier GSI 2000 looked to begin with. This version of the short lived model was scratched across the top sides with an odd blister on the roof. It was also devoid of the plastic rear panel that is so often missing on played with examples. Proportionally, this is an excellent casting, but it needed a lot more excitement, so I looked no further than the British Touring Car Championship for inspiration. And this is the result, a replica of John Cleland's 1992 Cavalier that came agonisingly close to the championship title that year. As you'd have seen earlier, I wanted to recreate what is one of the greatest finales in motorsport, in my opinion. I think I'll definitely need to do Tim Harvey and Steve Soper's 3 Series BMWs next. But I'm dead impressed with the quality of the decals, the replacement rear panel and the wheels. The whole thing just came together so well. I've lined it up against Cleland's 1989 Astra that I customised a while back at the end of the video, so do hold on to check that out. I'll leave links to Walton Style in the description below, where I sourced all my custom parts. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and be sure to like and subscribe. But all that leaves me to say is thanks for watching, and I'll see you again for the next one. Bye for now. Thank you.